Nick, oh, sorry. You got Nick Gordon's interview on Dr. Phil. Plus, we have Rudy D. Jesus here. We have how you say it? Say it for me. Kamal Kenyatta here. And also, Debo here. So, we also have all of the pictures from the Met Gala. We will be talking whose fashion came straight from the mall and who was the belle of the ball. So, sit back, relax, reflect, and it's time for an all new episode of Face the Facts. Party. <laughs> We're going to get straight into Face to Face, where we are talking about a lot of different things today. We're talking about the Met Gala. We're talking about, um, what's going on? Oh, okay. All right. I'm like, what? What's going on? He's signaling me. Sorry, y'all. Um, so let, we're going to get into Face to Face. First of all, let me introduce the whole panel to my... All right. Oh, first of all, you know, let me introduce Let's myself. yourself. Once. Yeah, right. right. The, the social prophet himself. That's oh, social prophet. <laughs> Were you like that? Yeah. I just thought of it. Wait till you hear my mind. I just I'm thinking of it right now. Oh God. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm freestyling. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be nah. something. Well, um, it's face to face to fact. Show how everybody doing. The weather isn't so good, but as long as we stay bright, everything else will be bright. Also, to the left of me, I have a, a very, very close, long-term friend of mine, man. I'm happy to see him doing his thing, man. I, you know, you can introduce yourself better than I can, so how about you just tell me? To, say, introduce yourself. Tell bro. the people who you is, bro. You know what I'm saying? My name is Debo. I'm repping Long Island. That's where I live now. Party the mic. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Y'all hear me? My name is Debo. Representing Long Island. You know what I'm saying? I just brought my clothing line through. Do a little music as well. That's me. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Nice intro. Okay. My name is D. You trying to be real? He got old Albie you Shaw. You sure you don't mean Billy <laughs> Debo? <laughs> Billy <laughs> Debo. Oh, oh, real Barry right? I want to sell quick. photos. <laughs> oh, jeez, Louise and Bees. <laughs> and to my right, Kamal Kenyatta. I'm a recording artist. Yes, right. NYC represent from DC. So is it NYC or DC? It's DC. Okay. You from no, DC? I'm from DC. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, we don't play out there. Do, do, do you know how to do the percolator? No, fuck that. No, the percolator. <laughs> oh, it's over. The percolator. I'm sorry. You go it's over. Over. I you're grown. You can curse. Yeah, you're grown. Like, don't play me. I'm not from B more. Oh, that's <laughs> different. So, so, oh, it's a different. So, it's somebody, like very specific. It's like somebody from, Jersey somebody from Puerto Rico saying you from Mexico, calling oh. you Mexican. Oh. You can't call but it's not, it's not close as far. Baltimore. But it's so, but y'all so close. It's like, but I can, so, I can, so I can fart worlds. and the fart One, smell will drift and you can smell it. And Baltimore from DC. That's how one close it is. One is the percolator, uh -huh. and then one is like just some whole other sh you know, stuff. Right, yeah, okay, right. mm -hmm. you know, we, we got it, we like got we it. on a whole nif different level. In uh, how do uh, how, so how, how, how 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 was the feeling of being in New York right now? Like what like what what, what was the you know what, what was the first thing for you when you first stepped foot off the bus or the train or the car? Or what whatever? did you take? Bus, and train, was like. What did you? What did you? Bus. DC ain't that but, oh, okay. but what did you? What did mega? you? What did you feel though? Don't the mega bus. <laughs> <laughs> but what? <laughs> you better take it. <laughs> F grade. The Chinese bus. I mean, yeah, the mega. Yeah, bus. mega. The mega, mega. Yeah, there you mega go. Bus. Yeah, Chinese bus. Well, I, no, I'm not going. I'm not going to pay two hundred dollars for Greyhound when no. the mega bus is like we get you that quick. We right, not, I, I rather. Right. I, I rather right. get that it's now. I would rather do a road trip. True. Getting a call but, with but a whole was, bunch of But friends. back to the question though, how, how did you feel when you first just like stepped foot and you smell all of the, 
hot dogs and it depends on your because if he got sewage <laughs> and bum juice and every, it was magic though it was it was, it was magical a, you yeah. had a moment yeah, i had a moment okay. I did the lights get you that's how the lights get me every time i go to Manhattan. like yeah. i don't like i love i and love new york so much every time the lights get me i'm like ooh. it's <laughs> important not to lose that it's important not to be so you know used to this and so jaded by it that you become like oh glazed over like oh this ain't nothing when it really is something you're really blessed and fortunate to live a lot of people ain't fortunate to live in a city. You know what I'm saying? That's very true. It's expensive as all heavens can be. It's expensive, mm-hmm. so just, just you know. I'm paying thousands of dollars for one head. toilet. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and mine don't even work. My toilet don't work, and my rent is thirteen hundred. Rent is too much for a toilet. <laughs> it's, it's so like, and you gotta share it with yeah. rats, probably, <laughs> and, ro- and a couple of roaches. <laughs> they they we, pay rent too. All right. So now, next to you, friend to the show. Back like he never left. <laughs> he believes in the infinite power to adapt to any circumstance, right? Due to your surrounding, he's the CEO of Intellect Clothing. Hi. You're back again. Yeah, for the second time. Why? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's like he's like a cousin to the. To yeah, he's the like family. a cousin, right? right. That's right. the hair suit. That's how Keem on Moesha always come over to eat. Yo, I can I can see this longevity wise, like coming, you know, like three years. What, what's this? In. What do you mean as in like this? In, like you guys own place and stuff like that. Oh, just like, oh speaking like, into fruition. Like yes. we all going, you know. Yeah, that's what's oh, up. You know, like, come on, Rudy. You know we always come holler at us, Mister D. Hissel. Anytime. <laughs> Actually, I have one. Well, oh, let's 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 let's, let's take a, I like his shoe. Let's take a look oh, at his thanks. shoes. Very Give him some shoe cam. Old, we didn't though. we didn't preset that up for him to get some shoe cam. These old things that he had. Right. It's just kind of cold. It's just kind of cold. Okay. Yeah. Let's go straight into. Let's get into. Face to face. Wait, but hold on. We, I just want to say real quick. Uh, all these, all these young men that we have that blessing us with their presence today, graces mm-hmm. with our presence today. Bless, they're very bless. intelligent uh, yes. young men, and then we're going to give our, we're going to give our urban perspective on what's going on in the world today, so you can hear stuff coming from us. Like I'm not talking about stuff from rap songs or whatever, what you think you might hear in some of these documentaries and stuff about what's going on in these cities that we come from and these uh, urban areas. I right. want to say hood because you know y'all might. Oh my God, it's hood. You know, we got to use more euphemisms nowadays yes, instead of speaking true. pejoratively it's because you know true. speaking pejorative can scare people away sometimes. You know, I, I had to right. learn that. You know, right. I, I used yeah. to have a bad enough for those that knew me for years. I used to say the worst things. Now I try to find a way to say things better so I can get better results. Oh, right. So if your breath smells like doo doo, I'm not gonna be like your breath smells like doo doo. I'm just say, oh, you might need a mint. There's <laughs> <laughs> alternative. That's that's using the euphemism. Okay, <laughs> you, oh, it's a little, it's a little hard. Hi, little tardy. Oh, it's a little hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Are you sucking on doodle sickles? No, <laughs> that, not at all. Is that a flavor? Come on, Teddy Doodle. All right. Well, let's go on to face to face. Let's get straight into face to face. This past weekend, oh, you wanted to say something Just first? Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't get to introduce yourself. Oh, you want to? We see you now. Just playing. Go ahead. We just kidding. Go ahead. Um, my Ooh. name is Rudy D. Jesus, as you guys heard. Um, you guys can follow me on Twitter, Rude Boy Sick, Instagram, Rude Boy Sick. And shout out to the fellas for having me on the show. Thank you, Rudy. Right. Thank you, Rudy. Very good. Y'all might as well hold this. So while you're talking throughout the whole thing, yeah. you can hear so you. Let's get straight into face to face. You guys are new here. Face to face is where we go head on, head topics with things that's going on in the world today, i.e., the, Mike, the Met Gala. And let's go straight into it. This past weekend, President Barack Obama delivered his eighth and final speech at the 2016 full White House Correspondent Dinner. He took the time to show off his comedian chops. He spent a half hour sending wise crack jokes at the expense of Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump, and the media, even his own wife. I wonder what Shelly was saying in the back. Like, I know you better not go off being embarrassing me. You know, that's what she do. He completed the speech with a textbook mic drop. We have video. Can you cue that video up for us, please? It's not going to be right there. (laughs) It's just for the Met (laughs) Gala. The guy wanted to give his hotel business a boost, and now we're praying that Cleveland makes it through July. (laughs) Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Hmm. And with that, I just have two more words to say. Obama out. Mm. That was not the easiest entrance I've ever made. 
<laughs> that was a good one. So Obama drops the mic. The issue wasn't about dropping the mic, actually. The issue that they had was Larry Wilmore, who was the master of ceremonies that night. He ended it with Barry, you did it, my nigga. nigga. Yeah, he and, said, and then Obama was like, saluted. yeah, like he saluted it. Like I get it, so, you know. He, mm-hmm. You know, uh, f- first of all, Larry Wilmore show. Shout out to him. We actually had the we've been to be there, right? Over there. Mm-hmm. We can go to Larry Wilmore show anytime we want. You know, right. Larry Wilmore show. If y'all didn't watch it, go watch it. Comedy Central, Hulu, and yeah, the last time. Yo, time. Larry. My, My nigga. nigga. <laughs> <laughs> but now, uh, you know, he's actually a smart dude and it's like he mixes comedy with uh, politics. Yes. You know? So it's easier for you to understand what's going on in politics, you know, because uh, a lot of us don't like watching CNN. A lot of us don't, especially don't watch Fox News. How many people can sit here and say you can watch Fox News all day? I don't. It's like dry eyes for clear eyes. The true. delegates very true. from New York is. Uh, oh, you uh, watch Fox News? No, is not. it the Roseanne Moscato? That's what you watch. <laughs> Fox News. So, but no. Um, seriously though, on a serious note, somebody had a problem with him calling and saying. Right, and it was he like, said, "Why?" Some white guy was like, "Why did you? Why would you call Obama a nigger?" Why would people you? Are so mad they, they can't use that. So word. Larry they Wilmore so said, "He said, no, no, I didn't call him." A nigga, I said yeah. my nigga. He said that's right. different. I, I I just took a word I used to call us and turned to something positive, right. and we was here with it, you right. know. So like I said, everything is all about perception. At the end of the day, they, I, I wasn't mad. I'm not mad. Me either. I was, I'm not mad. Nigga is a good word. It feels good when you say it. You it know what I'm you? saying? So you? Yeah, do you? Nigga, 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 nigga. Flow to it. Nigga, 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 nigga. It sounds good with everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. That's a hard. That's gonna be. They telling everybody to quit and quit, but that's gonna be a hard word to give up. I, I mean, got a few other like, words that's that hard a to good give word. up. <laughs> you know, you know, you, you well, wait, what you what you what you think about the the, the n bomb? What do you think about the n word? I don't think anything of it. It's just a word. Too much power, power to it. Right? Too yeah. much power. It I put agree. too much power to I it. I totally agree. I t- agree two thousand percent. Well, Prince has been dead all of two minutes, and the siblings are few know what Prince is money. The judge ordered that the money be split evenly. He has two brothers, one that is in an elderly and disabled facility, and it's not palatial at all. It's like something on Pickin' Avenue somewhere in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> now, his sister, Tyka Nelson, who gets most of the money, is in a battle with the other siblings because they want an even share. Now, there's an alleged love child who is about 30 years old right now, and mm. if they do the DNA test, and if he is proven to be the child, his DNA overrides yep, all of the siblings, the siblings and he would get the three hundred million dollars as Prince Estate and have say so over everything creative, whether more albums, releasing movies, and things of that nature. So, yo, to, um, th- that's what's going on. How do, how do y'all feel about that? Like, how would you feel? To, nah, to be honest, if I was lighter with a perm. Mm-hmm. I would say I'm his son too, just to get some 15 minutes of fame. We have, I mean, we have I the know. pictures. We have the pictures of him. <laughs> he looked like him he, though. He show, you know, he looks like him. They saying that he was a love child, and that the pictures they go, they'll show they'll show up in a few minutes. They said that it was a love child between Prince and I forgot the young lady's names way back in the way back. But he just lost a child two three months ago. You know right? right? Yeah, I did hear he that. He just lost a child, a baby or whatever. Yeah. He was mourning the death of his child. Right. Yeah, right. So in the time of him passing, that's, that's what was going on. Yeah. Right. Well, they, they say, they say that they he died of a flu and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, like, so nah, they said some drugs. Issues. Like, and then they said that he doesn't even use drugs. Though. But they, right. he was never really known No, he for, wasn't. A, and look, there's the drugs. picture. That's, um, <laughs> what do you got That's think? not him. Damn. There you go. That's not <laughs> Yo, Mel, know. he got the picture. You got the picture up right now, Mel. Oh my I don't, god! I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Chick- Chico, Chico, I just don't know. Chico. I don't know if that's real. Chico, I just don't know. <laughs> yeah, we fell. Stop laughing at him. <laughs> Yo, imagine this is real. Like next week, DNA results. He's a, <laughs> no, but it's they should have Mori. They, they, they should have Mori announce it. It's real. They should have Mori announce it. I promise y'all. Who real. vote? Who vote for Mori to announce if he's the real Me? father or not? I, I that I would be I, so entertaining. That would be very entertaining. They should put Mori on Channel Eleven News with his wife. Oh, Breaking news! Breaking news! Break news. Break news. <laughs> when it comes to thirty-year-old, that's a nice jacket, by, by the way. way. Right. You know, that's that's what Mori is saying. When it comes to thirty-year-old. 
Prince is the father. Prince, you are the father. That's how you yeah. say it. Everybody you goes crazy. Delay. No, but oh my right. God, look. You sure? It's better be real, I swear. No, it is. It actually, but, what a, but what a coincidence. Person, he act freaky like him. Look at the pictures. He's like... DNA. Probably. We, on, you always talk about DNA. Yeah, yeah but how all of a sudden he's, he's going to assume that's his father now. No, I, no he I, probably did. Had issues you know what I mean? A lot of people was like, why did they wait for him to be dead? And, they, and his explanation was that he's been working on a music career and he's been doing everything separately. It's just that he wanted Prince want Death to be like, you know, how they wanted Open it to and be willing. quick and willing. And then now Yo, that he's he, born, he, he felt like, like he's the namesake. So he wants to help cap. He might be. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, the name. It's how tall is he? Yeah, I, I hear you. Because you know Prince was like five feet. Yeah, that I don't know because I don't know. Him. Yo, I know um, it looks like I, we go to the same supermarket, but I don't know him. <laughs> he actually changed so, his name into that symbol. You yeah, know, right? right, right. Yeah. I thought that was kind of unique and dope. It well, was when Prince did that. Yeah, Prince. Mm-hmm. The, yeah, the when symbol he was, that he, you see is because he fought for a lot of. Because music. his name, he he ended up having a, a thing with the record label thing. I don't know if y'all know. And then he his name ended up being. The artist formerly, formerly known, known as, as Prince. And that was in, I watched a recent interview where he said that was created by the media. It wasn't even like his words. I know, because he had to, he had because no, he made it, he, he made no, it a symbol. That's yeah, why. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they hot. had to resort Chewy? to who he was last called. Mm. Chewy? That was Baby. crazy, right? Did anybody, what was y'all doing last Friday? Last Friday? Yeah. I was broken. Okay. Yeah, you were. You've been broken for a How's your hand doing? What you it's doing right. last Friday? Oh, I mean, <laughs> oh, in the afternoon, like four o'clock in the afternoon. The clothes. You could at least say you was at the sewing machine making your clothing line. Or, or something, talking, meeting with the designers. You're on radio. Okay, Shout out to Singer Sewing Machine. Right, right. Oh, so, oh is that why I got um, That's maybe where I got the idea from. Well, Anyhow, uh, I'll tell you. What else? We, we, we got, got anything on for, yeah, We have one more story, but right, we, right. since it's an open discussion, we can come what's back one more, to that. What's one more story? Nick Gordon on, that's what I said, we was doing last Friday. I was watching Dr. Phil. I don't watch Dr. Phil. What happened with the Nick Gordon? Tell us what happened. He had a and he had an in-depth interview. Remember, he had the first interview with Oh, Dr. the Phil. Bobby Christina the, Yes, killer. that's Nick's oh, boy. And ooh, yeah. ooh, OJ ooh, did it. Ooh, OJ did it. <laughs> but hold on, hold on. Time out, time out. If y'all know, that's that's Whitney Houston's adopted son. He was never officially adopted. But we but know. Mm-hmm. Then he married Bobby Christina. They were never really married. Suppose I'm just saying. Allegedly, right. Just allegedly. Um, but I remember, wait, was it, wasn't something funny that... Wait, wait, wait. Wasn't she supposed to, Bob Christine supposed to die at another time? When they no, that? what happened was Tell the us. day before Whitney Houston passed away, actually the night before, Bobby Christina was found in the tub, water all the way out into the hotel room and head down submerged much like she was, how she met her fate, and much like her mother was the next day. Mm. So the only the person who revived Whitney Houston, ale- who was supposed to revive him, allegedly was Nick Gordon. He's the only man who has been around at each time that they died this same way. <laughs> now the night that Bobby, Chris- the story came out, Doctor Phil got really in depth with him, and he was asking him different questions in his Doctor Phil way, like where were you the night that she died? He alleges that he was out drinking with a couple of Caucasian friends, and Bobby Christina had been drinking wine for two or three days, and she called him and was very upset. He said he came home. He said it was they never got physical and that she never did drugs, but there are clearly videos of her doing lines and smoking out of a bong, so he's already not legible. Then, he, what he also said in the interview was more interesting is the, what the family believes. But I'm going to tell you his perspective. We're going to go to a commercial break, and then I'm going to tell you what the family alleges. So he says that she said that she's been in pain and that she was self-medicating and that she was really sad. Now, when she was found, she was only 93 pounds. Oh. With a missing tooth. Oh. And scars all over. And it is She was really looking like he, her father. Yeah, right. Oh, <laughs> that's my boy. Hold on. I know. Hold we're on. getting more. That's my boy. I love Bobby Brown. <laughs> that is my homeboy. And he said that... <laughs> he said They saying that allegedly he... They had a fight in a room, and he beat her up, and we're not sure if she might have hit her head and did something, and he put her in the water. But oh. I believe that he did it. He caught her from behind. This is just my speculation. He hit her from behind, laid her the same way like her mother, oh. because if they are officially married, all of Whitney's estate will go to, to him. him. Hmm, this is like a job for Scooby and the gang. Velma? <laughs> <laughs> Made me say jinkies. So we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back, and I'm going to tell you what the family doing, and we're going to get into our Men Under Fire topic, where we talk a lot. We're going to talk with these guys about what they got going on creatively, and we're going to talk with what's going on in the community. 
with the urban community. We'll be back after these messages. Got to pay some bills, y'all. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a great opportunity. If you have an event, product, service, talent, or something important to say, now is your chance. You can have your very own radio show. Whether you're just starting out or a veteran looking for a professional platform to enhance your presentation and following, the GoPro Radio Network is the premier place to cultivate and share new and exciting content. We can help you grow your audience and keep it growing long after your first broadcast. Now you have a voice. Call 212 696-8562 696-8562 or visit www.goproradio.com and you'll be amazed at how easy and affordable it is to have your very own professional radio show on the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network, listen to the voices in your head. people rooted in Africa the cradle of human civilization descendant of the awesome men and women who made a way out of no way people steeped in the values of truth justice respect harmony balance reciprocity and order but 400 years of enslavement Jim Crow and racism fueled by the lie of black inferiority have taken their toll the result too much pain too much hurt, too much loss. We are our ancestors, ourselves, and our children, so much more than this. Join the movement for emotional emancipation, healing, and wellness for black people. Go to communityhealingnet.org and take the pledge to defy the lie and embrace the truth. That's communityhealingnet.org. Our children and our ancestors are waiting. The views and opinions expressed on GoPro Radio Network shows are solely those of the speakers and are not necessarily the views or opinions of GoPro Radio Network, Inc. or its affiliates. These broadcasts are provided on the understanding that they do not constitute professional advice or services. Individuals who speak on these broadcasts express their own opinions, experiences, and conclusions. GoPro Radio Networks and its affiliates do not necessarily endorse or oppose any particular opinion or conclusion discussed in these broadcasts. You may not edit or modify or redistribute these broadcasts in any way without the express permission from GoPro Radio, LLC. GoPro Radio assumes no liability for any of your activities in connection with our broadcasts or for your use of these broadcasts in connection with your website, computer, smartphone, tablet, iPad, or future listening devices. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. Why are you paying for radio? Are you serious? GoPro Radio offers content for free. Go to www.goproradio.com and listen to original, irreverent, and exceptional talk shows. It's free. Go to www.goproradio.com now. It's that simple and free. www.goproradio.com. Listen to the voices in your head. Oh, and did I mention it's free? You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network. The fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. Every I week, curse. I uh, do that every week. Like I don't know why I keep doing that, even though we changed the set <laughs> and everything. We are back. 
Yes, we are back. Like, um, I guess Cook Crack. I don't know when it left or came back. But <laughs> if you're just tune, tuning in, like I always say every week, shame on you to not tune in the show at the right time that it's coming on. Not on CP time. We got four, three gentlemen here. I was going to say four, but he's always here. Three other gentlemen here. Um, you on your phone during a radio interview? <laughs> That is, that, that, yeah, like that. What, what's going on here? First, let's take it from the left side. Let the people out there know what it is. Oh, what, oh, yeah, it passed to me. What it is that you do? <clears throat> How you doing? My name is D. Once again, I have a clothing line. It's called Go Get That. I'm the CEO of it. We got a ladies group as well, Ladies GGD. We're just making a lot of movement, trying to put out the hottest fashion for y'all throughout the summer. Just be on the lookout for us. Once again, my name is D, and that's what I do. Well, um, what does GGD stand for? This, yeah. Exactly. Good question. GGD stands for Go Get That. Go Get That? We spell it differently because we're all a bunch of diverse, different individuals. So, okay. so would that be um, selective? Like based on the person, what that stands for. Go get that. Yeah, exactly. Would be whatever. If you want to get money, your money if you want to go, go get, get your love. If you want to go, go get, get family. Just go for it. Just go, go for it. it. Okay. okay. Don't nobody stop you. Okay. Like no, that's good. You. Um. So like, do you niche? Do you do make all type of clothes, or do you just like have a niche market of it? Like, Wait, well, we started. We've been doing this for about four years now. We're doing it on behalf of my brother Sean. He passed away, so oh, we let indeed. his name live on. Okay. But um, we we started off with just t-shirts. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Then now. We got sweatpants, we have hats, snapbacks, scully hats, all types yeah, of Y'all see that um, jacket you got. Yeah, we got I jackets, varsity jacket jackets. Place. Show the people. Oh, well, show the people. And, 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 and how dare you not bring nothing? You should I apologize, teach man. You know, you know, I'm going to come do a couple more interviews. This is the logo right here. Okay. Okay, it's kind of like Gucci. Jacket. What size is that? It's almost it's, like it's, Gucci. It's, not, it's your size. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. <laughs> Very good I answer. Try that on. <laughs> Very good answer. I like what you guys are doing. Know what I'm saying I really do. And yeah, I, we like to give what we do here on Face of is We like to give up and coming new people. Although you've been at it for four years, and how long you've been spit, rapping? Sorry, so rapping. I, to be honest with you, I rap for. Pure fun. Fun. For the art. I love the art. I want to be a rapper, but I love it, though. Okay. Like, when I get in the studio and that track is done, it's just like, I love oh, listening to it. Okay. Because I feel like a lot of the music out here is trash, you know what I'm saying? Oh. oh Care oh. to mention any names? Who's no, trash? I'm, I'm not going to do that right Who's now. trash? No, we asked it. In, 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 in the industry? Who you, who you think like, like, was like, why do they have a deal? Like, we're like, why do they have a deal? Like, people like... Two Chains and Trinidad James and... Mm. I'm sorry, maybe I'm... What about Young Thug? Young Thug. I, to be honest with you, he has a lot of catchy music. His, yeah, it's catchy. You can understand what he's saying now? catchy, though? sometimes. <laughs> to be honest, I hated Young Thug. I hated, I didn't like Young Thug in the beginning, but now I'm listening to him. That like, lifestyle it's, it's song so is hot. Yeah, it's catchy. It's he hot. Has a lot of catchy stuff. I don't like, understand. The I think I'm getting old because... Yeah. I'm definitely old. I don't, I don't, I don't I'm like, I'm not getting jiggy with this. I'm still like listening to. I'm still listening to. It's dark and hell is hot. So I'm right, yeah. real old. That's oh, DMX okay. for y'all. I might be young. Now, DMX, he had some history. Yeah, shout like out, so. Shout out to the dog. But my thing is this, you know, at least back in the day, like rap had substance. Now it's not. It's starting to lack substance. Like we getting that from Kendrick Lamar, J Cole. Yeah, J Cole. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Good. Like, Kendrick but they. Lamar. But it's like you can't. You can't. I, 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 it changes my vibe when I'm listening to that, and then out of nowhere, it, da, 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 da. come on. I'm like, we'll get into like the when we get back to man on the fire. I would topic of the day. Uh, okay. Um, my name is Kamal Kenyatta. Oh, we can hear you really good. Bro. I mean, I don't like the um. I hold it for you. Okay. Like it's a real interview. Thank I don't like the term like rapper or anything. What term would you use? Um, I'm a recording artist. Okay. Like I be on some new wave type of stuff. Like you know, I just get in there and whatever I'm feeling at that moment in time. You know what I'm saying? It just comes out and I create art through okay. sound and my voice and everything. You have the audacity to be different. You know right. Being different. Do you produce your own music or? Um, it producing means like um arranging concepts. and writing and yeah. concepts and mm -hmm. everything like that. Yeah, I do that part. Somebody else makes the instrumentals okay. and. You know, the track or whatever that I that I write over, you know what I'm saying? But So now you just got back from a very special place. Yeah. Tell the people where you was at. South by Southwest. Right. That was an experience. I never seen anything like it was like wall to wall people, people. wall to wall music, like 
Everybody was there, you name it. Two Chains, Toy Lanes, Erica Badu, uh, Metro Boom. Erica was there? Erica was That's there. the only name that mattered out of all them people. Erica, <laughs> she was there. I mean, like, everybody was there. Michelle Obama was there. Queen Latifah was there. Missy mm. was there. What was that, Austin, Texas? It was Austin, Texas. You wouldn't have thought. I was like, it would, it would be no reason other than this that I would ever come to Austin, Texas. Mm. But once I got there, they really impressed me. Like okay. If I'm not familiar out there with what it is, it's kind of like Coachella, but like. <laughs> I thought it was Coachella. For the uh, Coachella, Coachella, Coochie, Coochie, sing. Coochie, you Coochella, say catch, I, I say coach. It's sort of like it. Uh, when it first started out, it was for a lot of um like extreme bike people, the extreme oh, sports, yeah, 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 yeah. and it was them. And then what happened was they had a small festival, a part of it, and then that festival just grew to like Summer Jam, where they attract artists. Oh, okay from all over the world, both underground and on ground, as you see. So that's basically where he just came back from. Now, you. I was on your Instagram, Mr. Rudy. I've been calling you D. Jesus, and you never corrected me. I don't understand why. It could be pronounced in different ways. It's De Jesus, it's D. Jesus, it's okay. D. Jesus, okay. or D. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> it's, from, it's from Jesus. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you break it down. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I when we first had you here, we did an interview. We played a game called Intellect the Idiot. Y'all yeah. can go look at that on YouTube, um, GoPro Network on YouTube. And um, I thought you was only a fashion designer until I was, like, lurking, and then I saw you, was, like, in the studio. Yeah. So all of y'all got something in common. Was this, like, a group about to start or something? Like, <laughs> what's going on? So what, what music are you working on now? Um, well, I'm... I'm a fan of the Jay Dillas, the okay, the Talib Kwalis, mm -hmm. mm. flows like currency and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I want to maintain the hip hop legacy, okay, but not trying to be an old school rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. I can adapt to other beats, but yeah, like mainly fashion because that's that was my desire. Okay, rap is more what I'm building on. It's like uh, not an extracurricular activity, but an activity. That I'm extracurricular. Oh, hey, okay, <laughs> okay, that's not. Oh, that's it, dope. It's, it's got to be the shoes. It's got to be. <laughs> the shoes. <laughs> but you know, like it's just it's just things I love to do. Like I okay. skateboard. You could say I'm a skateboarder only if you. You see did me. say that's how you started. Y'all all started. Y'all were yeah. skateboarders. I got do photography and things like that. You know, like it's it's things like that. Like oh, that's someday I, I hope to just have my own studio to you know, start to things. just be like a media, a whole big media. Excuse me. A whole big media, whatever. A yeah, friend mu music. Music, but music is media. True. That's why I'm saying. To just an extent, when you media. add politics to it, but I don't really want to get into it just to be number one. I just so if you off. are at SOBs, sold out, and no. SOBs for like, with only 20 people, you don't care. As long I as don't. those 20 people are fans Supporters, of your yeah, music. Supporters, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, like it's just the same concept as likes on Facebook. Like, I don't care about oh, how many no, likes I got, but if I can, if I can see next week, you tell me like, "Hey, bro, I saw what you did." I don't care about the like. Right. That was small more value. Okay. Yeah, okay, you know what I mean? Yeah, one one day at a time. I think you influence one person at a time. You never know. Got that butterfly effect. You never yeah. know. You never know. One the, the littlest thing, littlest kernel. That's a fact. Littlest mustard seed can uh, alter and change a future. Period. That, that happened with this show, actually. Like, a lot of people was hitting me up like, yo, I didn't even know. Like, a lot of people, like I said, going to look at the old shows, didn't even know who Bernie Sanders was until they watched our episode. No, they did. Everybody don't know. You know, you got to assume everybody yeah, knows. True, true. Everybody didn't Leaping know. Leaping lizards, Batman. Right. <laughs> or, or not even, like, information as well. Yeah. That, you guys that, got elaborate on the Bernie yeah, Sanders. Right. Like, exactly. I was surprised with exactly. some facts. Well, that's what, that's, 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 that's what we're here for. That's, okay. that's, that's my job, okay? <laughs> This is my <laughs> job. That's okay? right. This is my you got a chico. You got a chico. This right. is my job. My job is to entertain. Well, so <laughs> get back to entertainment. <laughs> I'm, we, a, I'm a scientist with our lab coat. We got pictures from the Met Gala that talk about all the different fashions that happened there. Now, what people didn't understand, because when we first saw the pictures, I didn't understand the theme either. I was like, why is everybody in metallics? Like, what's going on with that? And then I realized that they had a, a theme going. Mm -hmm. It was a futuristic theme where fashion was supposed to meet with the age of technology. And there we have Lady Gaga. What is Lady Gaga wearing? It's, uh, it's kind of... It's I'm, I'm glad I, that she's not too freaky like she used to be. She's not really freaky. She's showing her, you know, 
No, I'm talking about, no, I'm talking about, because you know she. He mean outlandishly freaky. Yeah, like, I'm talking about, like, at least she don't got a unicorn in the middle of her head. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like she used to do back then or whatever, you I, know. But cool, she probably would have showed up with fake That kind of fashion is called avant garde, just to clear I don't, it up. Oh, yeah, but I don't, it's I wasn't. Called avant-garde. She just showed up. Remember that time she showed up with a whole bunch of meat on? Yeah, that dress was banging. That was, like, nice. Me? But Lady I Gaga think, can't do wrong to me, so I'm like, it, oh, like wow. I, and pause you with this. I one. like the dress. I think that it, it, it'll be more for a performance wise, because if mm-hmm. you block out her face and put Beyonce on that, I can see her dancing, yep, yep, and that. getting crazy in that dress. Now, Your for it pe- to be on a red carpet, I think she should have. It's the Met Gala red carpet. That's the thing. That's <laughs> the, it's yeah, it's costume. Well, it's costume. Costume. Yeah, but that's more. Yeah, like, it's costume. What you, what you, what you think about it, Diva? What you think about it, The dress. To me, it looks like she should have wore some nigga, some mirror, because I don't know what that is coming out the body. <laughs> 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 it's, 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 it's some cool schools. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, I do the fashion thing. I think she, I think she did a good job with it. You know what I'm saying, it's, it's different from her. like you said. The uniform, she's, I'm used to her being crazy. Yeah, she's toned it down lately. Yeah, she's toned it down. And plus, she's engaged. I respect you, So she's toning it down lately. What do you um think of it? Um, it's Lady Gaga. She don't do too much to surprise me no more. Okay. But she could have put some pants on, though. I mean... Well, this is Versace. Right and right. the day of the Met Gala... Versace don't make pants, though? Like, I mean, <laughs> she could have got some shorts. Not though. really. When have you really seen them? Like, well, at least she ain't show up in no leggings and Uggs. Let's move to the next person. Right. Man. <laughs> That's Versace. Actually, that was Versace's birthday, and I really think that Versace was like... Child, it's my birthday. I'm not doing it. I'm not finishing your he outfit. Did. You got his sister. Yeah. Donatella, that's what I said. Yeah, <laughs> Next picture. Oh, uh, to me, this was the bell of the ball. This and they glue in the dark. Yes, like this that? that yes, this is fiber oh, optic wow. or organza. Zach Posen made that. That's Claire Danes wearing the dress. Claire, wow. Yeah, she looks like a modern day Cinderella. Yeah, and, I like that one too. And, yes. then, and glowing in the dark is like something from Avatar. Yes, it does. That she, like I said, they use fiber optic organza and they use 30 battery packs. This dress was so big, it couldn't even fit in the SUV or nothing. She had to take a bus to the Met Gala. A bus? A bus. B U S. This is a real true story. This is oh, face right. the oh, let's be clear. This is face the facts. Everything we say here is researched and checked, facts. and it is a fact <laughs> of what's going on. All right, next picture. Next picture. Huh. We asked last time it was um intellect or idiot. You said this man was a genius. This is Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. They are both rocking. Ball main, you know, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West is very good friends with Olivier. He is the designer for Ball main right now. And what do you guys think about it? Um, I would like to give a shout out for him for designing incredible pieces. I think it went with the theme, although, you know, Kanye stands abstract from it. I feel like he shows that his feet on the ground, but he's not too futuristic. As you can see with the shoes and the cut jeans, is in trend, but then when you go to the top, it gets more elegant, elaborate, mm-hmm. and it expresses what the Megala has, you know, found, you know what I mean? Okay. So it's like, it's really cool for me. Like, I, I actually like it. Like, in a few, in a couple years, I'd probably wear that with my wife, you know what I mean? Okay. That's nice. Yeah. That's when it's going to be in trend. What you think about it? Um, <laughs> I think Kanye West is a true artist. A like, um, if you think back in the days, like people, artists always been pushing the envelope, and that's right. just what they do. You right. know what I'm saying? They want the attention. They want to be talked about. This is how they make their money. So I think that, you oh. know, even if you look back like Prince, Prince had the ass out pants and everything. Right. People <laughs> wasn't here for that back then. It ain't you know in there. They, they wasn't. <laughs> They didn't, understand. Sure? they didn't understand what was going on back then. There's a lot of stuff they used to do back in the days that was like, what? Like, I don't understand. Oh, I forgot so this another is like, This is normal, you know what I'm saying, um, for artists. And I, I think he's expressing himself, you know what I'm saying? I, I can't really be too mad at him. You feel what? Yeah, yeah sure you can add. This is an open discussion. It's a um, panel. <laughs> another thing, as a designer, you know, we have to be on trend on what's going on. So his shoes is... Absolutely, 70s, and that's yes. what's in trend right I, now. I, but I don't like the so, shoes. No, no, it's not about liking it. I'm just saying, yeah, like, I, he's I on trend. He's on trend and with the futuristic flow. I mean, just peep the style. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, how yeah. it's created. Not more or less, like, what it looks like if it's ugly or not. What about you? What you think you think, you, what you think about it? About the shoes or just the whole The whole look. Both of them. And both of them, too. Not just Kanye. Both of them. Well, like I said, the dress, the dress is on point. Kim killed it, I think. Okay. 
but uh, for Kanye, I don't. It's too much stuff going on for me there. Yeah, I think I think the knee is out the too top, much. Yeah, yeah it's, he wanted knee cleavage. Ain't nothing wrong with knee cleavage. <laughs> yeah, but it's too, it's, it's, it's too much. Look at it. I think it's, I think it's too. It's like I feel like it's like three different styles. Like the shoes are like western. Okay, this let me let me just interject and tell y'all that. But also, what makes the Met Gala Bowl different is that the designer chooses. They dress yeah, them. Yeah, the designer well, dresses them. The designer says, I want you, the artist or whoever you are, and I want you to wear this. Oh, that's how the Met, that's how the Met so Gala goes. That, that. No. So, wait, wait. So, time out. So, time out. So, time out. So, wait, wait, wait. The only thing wait, Kanye wait. had to say so on was them 99 cent three in one contacts from Flatbush Avenue. So, wait. So, time out. So, time out. So it's he custom. Had, so, he ain't had, no, he ain't had nothing. To do with his knees being ashy? No. He, no. Spoke, <laughs> he, got, he, got, he got the knee cleavage. He probably didn't know he was going to have knee cleavage that night. They actually custom fit the dress look, for Kim. Like, right. he yeah. gave a shout out thanks on Yeah. On but look. They, look, they, look, yeah. they look pretty nice. He's dwelling too much. All right, yeah, we are. Go to the next picture. <laughs> yeah. Lupita Nyongo. She looks good. She just looks good in everything she wears. That oh, hair is God. straight from Whoville, though. That is straight from oh, Dr. Seuss. Like it's a microphone. The Grinch who stole this woman's weave. Like it like the on button on something. Just she usually does a good job and I'm always proud of, you know, she definitely represents for the dark sisters yeah, and stuff. She does. But it was like, okay, your dress is cute, it's regular or whatever, but then the hair is like That's Whoop. not the only thing she wore. She no, she wore another green dress. Yeah, that, that one is not on that one. It's a green dress. <laughs> That one is not on that the particular picture I seen that, Did you see homie in the back looking like... like whoa, what she got back going back. on? Go to Katy <laughs> Perry right, and Louis Vuitton. Let's, let's the next one. Next one. Katy Perry, Ooh, she's rocking like that. Anything, Louis Vuitton. Anything black and gold never like fold. That. Anything black and gold is beautiful. Exactly. Like, normally who... She color. definitely I love looks black right. And gold. It, it, normally who does um, this is Sarah Jessica Parker where they take the concept of the Met Gala and does it exact and precise. And I think that this time Katy Perry was the one who to took the futuristic, yeah. what, what it is they want to do with technology and moving garments in this Louis Vuitton. What did your guys think? I, I mean, I agree. I think she definitely captivated the whole look. Um, it gives it a dark me a dark look, too. Like, if we go into the Kanye, she they look more brighter. Like, and this is more dark, more fierce, more serious. Mm -hmm. I like that. More sophisticated. Mm -hmm. I was born in it. And the dress is amazing. Just in my own perspective, I would have probably cut the... The back part, the, the back train. part, a little, a little bit, just so that it doesn't, it's not too much. I'm sorry, it's not Louis Vuitton. I like this Prada. I like the Prada. It's Prada. It's not just any bag. It's Prada. <laughs> yeah, she, she looks, she looks very effective. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know what happened to her edges. You know what I'm saying? But she did, she did with it. It's, it's cool. I think her complexion goes well with that too. Mm -hmm. mm. That's just perfect. All right, next picture. We're going to go to who? Skip it to. Let's go on that. Beyonce. Latex. All latex. Oh, my God. Did she all like, is latex. That, is that real human nipples? Wait. Wait. <laughs> she looks like a sexy piece of raw chicken. Like, <laughs> she, she Purdue. She's like a pluck chicken. What How you could you be mad at anything she had on where her body looked like that? Man, I don't you know care. What you saying? remember, you remember like, sixth grade and they used to show us the health class pictures? You don't want to get this disease. That's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what her dress or the gonorrhea. She got her dress got gonorrhea. She got herpley burpley bumps on oh there. Oh my god! <laughs> y'all, y'all talking about all that shit? I want to know how hot that her goddamn coochie is after wearing that dress <laughs> all latex all night. That and the boob sweat and the coochie. Ooh. Coochie, I'm telling y'all. Bad cootie doing. So she was musty. I yeah. say. I, th I say, like, if you look at it in that perspective, that's one. In another perspective, just think about how serious PETA is with the fur. This is a total opposite drift from it. Like, instead of having, like, an animal on her, this is, like, basically wearing the skin after they've taken the fur out. So it's more, like, in-depth if you actually look at it. Like, Beyonce is a queen. Like, you got to really think about she what is, she's wearing. She is, but look at the wearing. shoulders. What is that, balls? Look at the show. What is she it does, it, it, it's not, it's I not, think, not I don't think it's the best type of look that she should have worn. Mm -mm. She looks saying, beautiful. It has a message. Don't get right. it twisted. It, it, seems, it, looks, it, looks, it looks nice. It, it does. Seems, Even it though it looks message. like nipples. I think it was bold. But I think, okay. yes, it was yeah. bold, bold. And she could have done Met better. Gala, yeah, right, right. But I right, think she could have done better than that. It's the Met Gala. Especially release of Lemonade. That's next episode. Lemonade and two-day relationships. It's the Met Gala. That's true. That's, that's, that's it not just justifies. But it's the Met. Is that a nipple? But it's the Met. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have pubes on your scarf? Yes, but it's the <laughs> Met. Yeah. This one is not displayed for everyone to fully see, but.
You got Beyonce. It has to be on the list. Right there. Yeah. No, it has to be on those four. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, I would say Katy Perry. I'm gonna go with Beyonce. I gotta go with Katy. Okay. I'm the that's only good. one picking Nicki. <laughs> Man, all I see is buckles. Buckles, buckles, buckles. Buckles, buckles, buckles. I'm talking about the clothes too. I'm talking about the clothes too. I'm not, I'm not, too, I'm not too, too fond of Nikki like that, but I, I like her dress. I like Katy Perry's dress as well, but it's like she did too much on it. I like something. Plus, Jamie Scott, all right, I'm, I'm, not, I'm showing favoritism, but who cares? I like the buckles. I like the dog thing. She likes something out of Queen of the Dam right now. She, you, know, you know what? She looked like she. A virus to, mistress. She looked like she about to just whip me with something. I, I, Sierra did look very good. Though. I don't like the hair, even though it's the Met not. Gala. She could have did something different. Cause she Sierra kinda, brought it way back. But she kind of like Linda the Good Witch from The Wiz with that. That's nice. Oh, uh, and there's a little bit of Josephine Baker. Just kinda, yeah, I like sorta, it. I like kinda, it, but sorta, it's, it's like really good, I think she could have did way. Better. I think that you know. I don't think it was a lot of effort put into it enough. I think it was like probably last minute. But I right. like for some reason I'm, I'm picking Nikki. So Beyonce yeah. won because Beyonce got three. I mean two votes. Right. No. Yeah. No. Three, everybody three, got one. Three votes. Oh, you voted I Beyonce too. No, he said Katie. He said Katie. And he said, Beyonce. "Oh, so two Beyonces, two, two Katies. Katies. It's and a tie. So you got oh, I got. I got to break the tie. Ah, got... oh. nipples." Dude. I'm gonna take Katie. I'm gonna take Katie. Oh, uh, Katie yeah. Perry. I'm gonna take yeah. Black and Gold never falls. All right, very, very good. We're gonna take a quick commercial break, and when we be back, we're gonna talk about the subject that's at hand. Yeah, we gotta, so we gotta, we get, gotta, get, into yeah, we gotta get into that. We gotta get into the city. Man under fire. We'll be back right after these messages. <laughs> What if you can have an entire team of skilled... You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. What if you can have an entire team of skilled professionals to help your business grow? Admin, accounts, marketing, and more but only pay for the exact amount of support you need at virtually the same cost you'd pay for one full-time employee. With virtual professions, you can. One contact, one number gets you a team of virtual professionals for exactly what your business needs. It's 1-888-315-VPRO. That's 1-888-315-8776. Or online at www virtualprofessions.net virtual professions incorporated because you mean business why are you paying for radio are you serious gopro radio offers content for free go to www.goproradio.com and listen to original irreverent and exceptional talk shows it's free go to www.goproradio.com now it's that simple and free www.goproradio.com Listen to the voices in your head. Oh, and did I mention it's free? The views and opinions expressed on GoPro Radio Network shows are solely those of the speakers and are not necessarily the views or opinions of GoPro Radio Network Inc. or its affiliates. These broadcasts are provided on the understanding that they do not constitute professional advice or services. Individuals who speak on these broadcasts express their own opinions, experiences, and conclusions. GoPro Radio Networks and its affiliates do not necessarily endorse or oppose any particular opinion or conclusion discussed in these broadcasts. You may not edit or modify or redistribute these broadcasts in any way without the express permission from GoPro Radio, LLC. GoPro Radio assumes no liability for any of your activities in connection with our broadcasts or for your use of these broadcasts in connection with your website, computer, smartphone, tablet, iPad, or future listening devices. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network, listen to the voices in your head. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network, listen to the voices in your head. All right, we back. 
We back. Yeah, we back. We back. We live and we action. All right. Uh, we just went through, you know, the face to face is the, the the part where we just pretty much just say what's going on in the media, what's going on, who we are, et cetera, et cetera. Now it's time to really get into facing the facts. All yes. right. We go, we're going to sit here, all of us young, intelligent men yes. from us urban neighborhoods, black mm-hmm. men. We're going to do right now is we're going to give you our perspective mm-hmm. firsthand of what we go through in the community. We're going to go through four major matters, and I'm going to ask some questions, and we're going to answer some questions you know, uh, about what goes on with us because we want all of the viewers and all of the people out there to know, even these archive videos that if they want to pull it up and they want to see, all right, this is what's going on with them, they should be able to reference what we're about to say. Right. So I just want to say beforehand, gentlemen, everything that we say uh, here today, this has to be like real life, you know, right. what you're going through, how you're feeling. Don't, don't feel, don't, sugarcoat. yeah, don't, yeah, you don't, don't, don't feel the need to sugarcoat. Or if, be politically. If, if, if you if you feel a certain type of way about something, man, just let it all out. Mm-hmm. You know, be yourself and just tell the truth mm-hmm. about what's going on. Because I know that I am. No, that's right. You know, so let's 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 kind of pretty much. Uh, we we did th- we did one on, on females and whatever, f a uh, couple episodes ago. Last episode, actually. Yeah, it's last. Yeah, episode. yeah, yeah that, last, last episode. episode. Yeah, last episode. Yeah, but uh, now what we're gonna try to do is we're just gonna go into what it what it's like being, man. First, we're gonna do we're gonna just start off and go on a go on mm-hmm. a row. Uh, just really brief. What do you? How? What is it like for you to grow up in an urban community? Uh, growing up in an urban community, you have to adapt to change. You have to adapt to uh, circumstances. Um, I would say we deal with a lot of rejection. Um, not only rejection, because then people might captivate it as a job and getting not hired. But I mean literally in information like people wouldn't tell you something. Oh, close people wouldn't tell you something close. just because they think you're about something else, the way that you present yourself or just without even saying words and whatnot. So it's a lot of uh low level discrimination still. Um my experience growing up in the uh the urban community is I don't know. It, it it was good and bad. It was bittersweet, you know, because mm. at the same time we had a lot of um, camaraderie and there was a lot of protection in there. Mm-hmm. Like we don't have to worry about ISIS in the hood. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to worry about <laughs> you know somebody coming in our hood and messing with us or you know doing anything to us or anything like that. We it's a certain sense of you know protection that 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 goes into that. But at the same time, like he said like rejection you know what i'm saying you look down upon you look like you're on a lower level you know what i'm saying um it's just it's, it's very classist you know what i'm saying sometimes in america so it's a it's a it's a gift and it's a it's a curse, curse. at the same time okay. Me too. Yeah. Well, oh um i don't need that um growing up in the hood for me mine is a little different i don't want to seem like i'm the sellout or i'm jaded it's, it's, um, keep that still yeah um, cause it picks up everything that I'm kind of jaded, but I kind of lived in the fantasy world. So to me, I knew I lived in the projects, but it was like the sky rise. It was like Trump towers to me in my mind. And I really didn't, I didn't really view, um, I didn't really have any adversity until I really saw somebody like shot and dead, like right out of the window. And I remember being like, uh, I think I was about six, eight years old. And I was like, mommy, he's dead. And that's when she realized that she had to move out of that particular part of East New York, Brooklyn. We later on moved to worse, the Bronx. But for me growing up, I, I don't know. I was kind of, I knew it was going on, but I wasn't as interested in it growing up. I'm more involved in it now as an adult, to be more honest with you. Because I had a lot of different tragedies that was happening, and it didn't necessarily happen in the hood. It was when I went away. I went away to camp, but we'll get more into that. Um, Go ahead, Debo. Go ahead. Well, to me, growing up in the urban community, now that I'm older, I realize you're a product of your environment. And Sometimes. I really think so, because I see the way people grow up, and I feel like people use that as an excuse, too, sometimes, though. Mm. But growing up, I see a lot of... I'm not gonna say, okay, hood people that mm-hmm. grew up in the hood and the mm-hmm. way they speak, the way they carry themselves, that's what's around them all the time. So how are they gonna learn something different when they're starting to grow up in their, in their early teens? Mm-hmm. When they're in their early teens mm-hmm. and everything, how are they gonna learn something different if that's because that's what they're around? So I just think growing up like that, you're a part of your, of your environment, but once you get older, you should be old enough to know to start differentiating. 
like me. I grew up in Brooklyn. Not, so not the Brooklyn. greatest neighborhood, but now I'm what neighborhood? I lived in Clinton Hills. Okay, that's basically um right next to Fort Greene, mm-hmm. up Clinton Hills, Fulton Street. Right. But didn't you live in Newport News, Virginia too? Though I lived in Virginia too, in the hood of Virginia. How was it like <laughs> that? I, to be honest, Virginia wasn't for me, and I really don't want to get into too much of Virginia. Because, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was down there with him, by the yeah, way. I'm saying I knew him forever, <laughs> but um, we grew up down there. Yeah, like, but like I said, growing up in urban, it's just you just gotta, as an adult, you gotta learn how to start thinking different, moving different, mm-hmm. because we're gonna just keep getting in trouble because we already got a target on our back. That's know? true. We so, under fire. Well, fire. that's that's the thing about being under right. fire. Now, I'm I'm before I give the facts, I'm just gonna give my perspective right. how, of things, and I barely do that. So it's like really like everything right now for me to do that. Um, first and foremost, I've been to and I've lived in almost all of the hoods in America, especially especially on the Eastern Coast. I moved around a lot growing up, so I got to see the hood from different perspectives. Mm. I've been in your hood before. I've lived in the downtown hood with you. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. I was born in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. you know. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I, done, I done grew up in the Bronx. I done been to Cali. I done been to to Atlanta. I done, I done, I done, done it. Like you know, mm-hmm. I done been to like you know, D- Wilmington, Delaware. Like like I've I've been like I've I've lived a lot of places and I've seen a lot of things and it's similar and it's and, but all I know is that it definitely is a subculture mm-hmm. and but one thing is that. Being born black in America already is like you have one strike, right? And then being born black in an urban community, you got another strike. A lot of people don't really uh, recognize that. It's like we work hard and we pay taxes for police to watch over us. I'm I'm paying the police to protect me. Mm-hmm. But when I see the police, I get nervous. Mm-hmm. Why do I get nervous when I see the po- I can be doing nothing wrong and I get nervous when I see the police. Mm-hmm. Why is it? Why is it that in my hood I know more, I know more drug dealers than I know doctors? That 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 has nothing to do with because of what 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 I chose to be around. Right. That mm-hmm. I didn't have I didn't I didn't I didn't choose I didn't choose to be here. And I didn't choose to be born in the neighborhoods that I was born in. Right. You get what I'm saying? But however, I get I get the uh, I get the the punishments from it. Right. Now, like he he said it perfectly by it being a gift and a curse. It is a gift and a curse because. It, it makes us, it builds us into something totally different. And you know, like, and then plus, a lot of us don't utilize these tools the way that we can. We can, we can kind of like build ourselves up. We already been through the worst. Right. You know, so when you get put in certain predicaments and you're like, well, dang, this look where I came from at least. We're content with that sometimes. If we, mm-hmm. if we make it somewhere in life and things go south because life is all about Everything, everything, just you know, it's just always opposition. It's always gonna be something there that bad. It's gonna be some type of battle. Right. So it's like, but when you from where we from, and we and we go through certain things like that, you're like, look where I came from. Right. This ain't, exactly. this ain't, it's nothing. You know, this, compared mm-hmm. to you know what I mean, mm-hmm. or not even that. It give us reality because we seen more things happen to other people. Mm-hmm. Like the first number one thing I want to get, I want to get all your opinions about is, what do you think about police brutality? Have you ever encountered police brutality? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Encountered it like yeah, me personally. Uh, and what do you think about police brutality? Well, if he was around, I think I just, well for the most part we're judged on a constant basis. So I, most of the time I've ever got stopped was for false search. So no, they had no reason. We was just walking, mm-hmm. doing our own thing. Now the recently, bro, this is like two weeks ago. Oh wow! Because you know I was telling you I'm working a different place now. So right. we did a delivery by a school. A cop pulls a five year old, and I'm talking like probably. Like he's up to here, like I don't know, maybe less, lower than four feet, like small, small, small. Like ha- having three cops hop out of DT van and seeing them search this little boy that had no book bag, no jacket, just jeans, and then having the the police school safety come out to school scared for the little kid's life, like just seeing that whole thing mm-hmm. just shows of how mm-hmm. how fearful we are as a people, right. to be honest. Yes. Because a lot of parents came out of the school, ran to the park, started sending the kids home. You know that only happens rare on rare occasions if there's a shootout or whatever. Yes. And mm-hmm. that's on the contrary. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, it's still around. It's still around. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely around. And it's definitely something that um, that is felt. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's, it's something fucked up in the air when you, when you get around police. Um, I haven't been brutalized or I haven't been like... Um, 
I, they haven't, I haven't had anything violent or anything happen to me, but I definitely have been talked to in a sense or treated in a sense that I was mm. low in a way, in a way that just because they of my skin color. Kind of like, like, like they degraded yeah. you. Yeah, yeah like what I kind mean, of they, they, say, they degraded what? you. Like, okay. you know, you could have you could have been the one that called them. Like, hey, I feel like I had a break and shut up. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sit down. Don't that. move your hands. Oh, all that stuff right. like that. I like that honky accent. Like, yeah. Don't move your hands. Like, well, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Like, why? And, and in the back of your head, you know why they talking to you. Right, right. right. now. You know what I'm saying? You know why you being stopped. And Coming from the District of Columbia to New York, which vibe feel worse when you see police in D.C. or when you see police in New York? Um... It's pretty much the same vibe. It's the same. It's, it's the, the same. same vibe. They treat us the like same. that everywhere. I can tell you one instance. Mm -hmm. I was in South by Southwest. Okay. We was in Texas and we was trying to shoot like this music video. Okay. You know what I'm saying? In this neighborhood. And um, it never crossed my mind. We was like, it was like eight o'clock in the morning. Okay. Cause just trying to catch the sunlight at the okay. right time and all that stuff like that. And um, I was riding a bike. Okay. And they was telling me to ride the bike. Up and down the, the direction street. that was the direction yeah. from the direction. They were telling me ride a bike up and down the street, and the people was in a car videotaping like out of the sunroof, okay. you know, videotaping. Did there. they have a permit for that? Um, no, they didn't have a permit. Okay. But fifteen minutes into it, I got stopped by the police, mm. and um, the police was asking me questions like, "What are you doing around here? And why are you riding a bike up and down?" I'm like, "I'm riding a bike up and down the street." At eight o'clock in the morning, like, what do you think that I'm doing? Right. And they're like, well, we had a lot of burglaries around here. I'm like, I look like a burglar. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, really? Right. And so, I see this white female walking down the street. And I was like, was she riding a bike too, as well? She wasn't riding a bike, but she was walking. But I said, you you doing this because I'm black? And they tried. Oh no, we're not. We're not. And I said, you want me to tell you how? Because if it was her, you would have never stopped her right. asking no question like that. Right. It's offensive and it's hurtful. It is. It is offensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are very good, strong words. You I mean, deep, I, I don't know what any, um, like you came into contact with any police brutality or all right. you firsthand I, I real, or right? yeah, yeah, of course, keep I it all the way real. I don't want to feel like I'm taking anybody, but as a youngin, I was wild. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I came into the police brutality, but now, like I said, I'm being older, more mature. Hold the mic closer. I see that it was how I reacted okay. that caused them to your do reaction. It, to be honest with you. Because now that I'm older, I get pulled over and it's, I speak to them nicely. They speak to me nicely. Sometimes I don't even get tickets. Okay. Like, I don't want to seem like I'm on their side, but sometimes the way you act. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I've been police brutality, like, before. You know what I'm saying? they okay. not saying they had a right to do it. Okay. They did throw me on the floor, had their neck, they footled on my back. But at the end of the day, I really was doing something I had no business, no business doing. doing. So you felt like so it was sort of justified? I felt like, not even just, because they shouldn't have done it. They're not right. supposed to do that. But they, they just... They're police. They're supposed to protect their neighborhood or protect whatever they're protecting. Right. Everybody else. So they they might they only they're human as well. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So like I said, we gonna get into like a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people forget about. that they're human. Yeah. yeah, they are human. So like I said, it's not right. Like a lot of the other issues that's going on when they're just killing people. That's a whole totally different right. issue as far as the brutality and the way they speak to you and everything. I'm saying I've been through it, but sometimes it's, it is kind of justified. You know what I mean. I um went through police brutality with myself actually. Um, I I didn't understand the brutality part because I was already arrested, <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, so the punishment is getting arrested. Uh -huh. Why? I'll just tell the situation real quickly. Okay. I was into a fight on the train, and they took me to the the police station inside of the train, um, on Hoyt Skimmer Hoyt in Brooklyn. And when I was in there, the black lady. You know, she was like, listen, do you have anything on you right now before we search you? And I honestly said, yes, I have, you know, what I have. And it was cool. The white, the Caucasian, the white officer who arrested me took me in the back to the bathroom and was like, yeah, you cuffed. What you going to do now? Because during the time he was arresting me, because I was in most into a fight and I was enraged, uh -huh. I was, I was upset. You know, I'm fighting. So I'm <laughs> tight. And, um... He was like, yeah, tough guy, what you gonna do now? And me and him got into a fight in the bathroom in the police station. You and the cop? Me and the cop. This is a story, I'm not making it up. We got into a fight while I was handcuffed. He lost. <laughs> Bad for your player. Um, <laughs> he lost while I was handcuffed. 
And we went through a big, a big trial, like back and forth with them saying that I spit on him and I bit him and I did this. And I don't even bite people because I'm a germaphobe. So I don't bite skin and all those type of things. So that was my first hand um, experience with police brutality. Wow. Don't, um, I've, I have stories for days, but I wouldn't even get into it or whatever. But honestly, <laughs> it's been times where I probably was doing something I wasn't supposed to. And it's, it's times where, I, where I, you know, I was just being a law-abiding citizen or whatever the case may be. So, um, but that's, that's, that's neither here nor there because he, he, did, he said it perfectly by saying they're human. Mm-hmm. All right, that's, that's, that's one thing that we, you know, hey, sometimes you're going to have somebody on a bad day. Yeah. And they're having a bad day. We're right. all, we all entitled to mistakes and we always have room for improvement. That's right. But however, how we, how we govern, right? <laughs> This is the funny thing, and this and this is what messes things up, right? In your neighborhood, how many police do you deal with that you know that's from your neighborhood? Mm. I wait. Deal with like mm. like you know like, like they're yeah. from your neighborhood and like, they're oh, police. Yeah, like oh that's John. No. You know he live on Bushwick Avenue. All right. <laughs> now if you now I'm gonna spit statistical facts. Yeah. If you go to areas right where. They grew up with these police officers, mm-hmm. and they know maybe the police officer's cousin, this, that, and the third. They don't have as much crime as crime we have with area. these strangers. Yes, right. Don't don't have somebody from Scarsdale being a police officer on White Plains Road in the Bronx. Right. I don't know him already. It's already a conflict because I don't know you. Yeah, there's no common right. ground. And not only that, I look different to you. Right. You don't know what it's like being in this neighborhood. neighborhood. You only know from what they tell you and what they teach you. And they're brainwashing these cops. I understand why. I understand why. Or whatever. But still, you take that. They have a shoot first, ask questions later. Yes. And they always use the excuse by saying that, oh, I don't want my men out there to die because we put our trust in people. They want to shoot you because they think I have a gun and I'm pulling yes. out my wallet. No, but that's the job that you're signing up for, right. is that you have to make those decisions. And, and if you get shot on duty, you get shot on duty. Yeah, yeah. You know that's what time it is. Right. I'm not going to join I'm not going to join the Army and then Say, I don't complain because like I got shot. shot at. Right. <laughs> I'm not about to be a stripper if I know I ain't shaved. I, right. <laughs> I'm not about well, to go. Well, you allergic to metal and <laughs> it on the pole. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to sit there. I'm not going to sit there and take a job if I know that I can't do the job or something to part of the job. Like, come on, because you got some people that actually, do you know it's, it's a test that we can take that can tell what, what type of personality we have? And some of us have protective personality. Yeah, I you know what I'm saying? That, yeah. But what we have mm-hmm. mostly is, is, is guys that's police now that's chasing the check. That's it. Mm-hmm. They're chasing the check. That's why, that's why we all, I don't know if you haven't been there, but I've been there before when I had money in my pocket. And I'm like, yo, I had, I had a gravity knife also that I could have get booked for. And I'm like, yo, man, just take the cash. And they took the cash. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Payola. Mm. And that's that's one thing I wanted to say, mm-hmm. um, sidebar too, is like the cops will pick and choose what choice they make. Mm-hmm. We have to abide by the laws that are written in books and right. mm-hmm. every sentence is complete and yep. extended yeah. to its full potential, but then shortens just the things like that. Like they want us to abide through the rule books and they want them to be flexible in the right. situation. So that's where we differentiate. And- you You're right, and this is and this is what this is another reason why I love I I like what Bernie Sanders say because yeah. he's one of the main people that say that we should have more people from the urban community be cops Not in the urban community. community because do y'all know when all of the yeah. stuff that went down we got a whole bunch of money in New York City for the um for the police department but instead of like you know doing other things with this money. When, 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 when September 11th happened? No, 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 no. Oh. Recently. Oh, they got, okay. they got a big, they got oh, a big like, check. Oh, every, okay. They got a big check recently. No, um, uh, no. New York City got a big check. Okay. And they use that check to employ, I forget the number right now, but XYZ amount of more cops. The problem in New York City is not more cops because I've went to other neighborhoods, urban neighborhoods, and it's one cop to a car. You never in New York you ever see one cop to a cop car. No. Never. I was I was in Baltimore, not Baltimore. I was in more the suburban area, but I was in Maryland when the whole Freddie Gray situation happened, and they bought out the you see the the ten trucks like they bought down all of that. They had to divide the street. Everybody had curfew. Just imagine how severe they made everything. Mm. Like, and the one guy, he was fighting the curfew. He was just walking. If you see the video, you see mm. him, a, a truck passing, they throw him in the van, and you don't see him no more. That's crazy. Also, yo, yes. like, but my thing, they just had a, they just had a big, um, 
They just had a, a really national security. That's not now, on the national guard. Sorry. Yeah. Now we're gonna go into other segment. Basically about we're gonna go into another topic. Basically about you know now we talk about the police now dealing with mm -hmm. the law being the from law. urban mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. All right. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the law and then we're gonna go into a break and we come back and talk about the next two topics. Okay. But we're gonna we're gonna talk about the law really quick. Okay. Really quick. And I want to say is this is that. Um, <laughs> Just because I might dress like somebody don't mean that I act like that person. That's very true. Mm -hmm. And this is what this is what they fail to teach them, mm -hmm. I guess, because they think that if if I dress a certain way, then that's what I have. Now I understand you got to make a call. You know what I'm saying? Like I, like you know they always ask that question. Oh, uh, if if you seen Trayvon Martin with the hoodie on and reaching for something in his pocket, yeah, but it won't be because of what he has because he's reaching for something. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I was arrested and they have print out outlines of what a hood person would look like. like Sorry, a, a urban yeah. gangster would mm -hmm. look like. I'm serious. Like one of these fifth grade coloring things that we used to do, mm -hmm. like they'll print it out from Google. They have that for us to describe what we would wear. Mm. And they passed it right in front of my eyes. And that's serious. Like in the precinct, bro. Like, wow. And it's crazy. This is the crazy thing because A, all right, the cr crime rate is dropping, but we're not being treated like the crime rate is dropping. Nope. You get what I'm saying? No. More, more, more people from urban communities and black communities are going to college now. This That's is a, very this true. Is a statistical That's fact. True. That's a fact. The, 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 the number, and you know what's crazy? Especially, anyone. especially black women. Mm -hmm. They like the number one. Well, like they just yeah. like super Graduate smart right now. Like we yep. don't know what it's women. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. But, but right now it is more. There, there are more black men in in, in college. Than in jail. Jail, that's but this is something that's not promoted. Mm -hmm. It's promoted when it's the opposite. We all know mm -hmm. we all grew up in the nights. We all know what it was like with all of this anti crack era. They was dogging us every chance they got. They did. They dogged us every chance they got. And they subliminally said stuff and did things and we, we don't even gonna take it there on a conspiracy tip. But yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and say that the government pretty much wants to keep us in the hood or whatever the case may be, but all I'm saying is that it looks it looks it looks that way because mm -hmm. it was a mission on the front page like back mm -hmm. in the day the crack epidemic was a mission from yeah we, we all know that we, yeah, you know right. people yeah. had to pay for that we're not going to get into all that but, but my thing is this now we have the guilty by association thing they just have like a big thing in the Bronx they had the biggest bust Ray, in Ray. Um, New York City history mm -hmm. right that it's like 160 good. dudes yeah. well yeah, 120 yeah. at first but yeah. they really I think they're like up to 200 now and this is the funny thing about it you cannot tie 200 people to 10 crimes you can't yeah. <laughs> like, Bobby you Schmerz. can't you can't now exact all right. <laughs> if there's a gun on this tape right here, one gun, how can one, two, three, four, five possess one gun? That that can't happen. Now how can they use a crew affiliation when that's even by far like we have um bikers? Um, exactly. The angels, right. But the let me tell you, but, but let me tell you what they that do they though. Actually, let me let me tell you the difference to what they do and what we do in, in, in these areas, right? I'm speaking generally, I'm not saying I do it. But <laughs> they have they have legal organization. So all these biker crews, they be LLCs. Mm -hmm. They have That's something. That's Whether it be tire a, changing a or, yeah. or whatever, they have something. Mm -hmm. They have something to say that we, we have the right to organize right now. Right. When guys conjure up, we really, and, and, we, and we have conversations and we got a group and we do stuff like that. If we don't have nothing legally backing us, then we, we unauthorized groups. We're a gang. Exactly. Oh, that's, a that's a change. That's a change. That's a change. That's a change. That's what changes a gang from an organization. Right. In the individual. A exactly. But now this is oh. this this is the flip. This is the flip side of it. This guilty by association is a killer because you can have your own business. You can you can sell drugs, do whatever you do. I can see you every day on the block. I may have went to school with you. I can dap you five. They take pictures of us dapping five. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, that I gotta go to court, and I yeah. and I'm I'm on the bottom of the totem pole somewhere. Mm -hmm. Or I can see you in the club, and we can take pictures together just to show love. I could be working a nine to five, and I'm spending my money on something I shouldn't in the club. Mm -hmm. But I'm with you, and you're a known drug dealer. I'm pulled in your ring, and now I have to go through maybe my peers mm -hmm. to get me out of a situation that I'm in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the that's the foundation of guilty association because there's no way possible. It is no way possible that that you're 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 getting all of these and you round up all these people. You're because this is what they're doing. A hundred and sixty people, that's a lot men. Men, yeah. That's a yeah. lot of people. Mm. Facts. That's a lot of people in one area. We talking about one area. We're not that's that wasn't through the whole Bronx. Mm -hmm. That was in the area of the Bronx. Or like one neighborhood. Pretty much it's like three little neighborhoods put together, you know what I'm saying? But a hundred and change? Wow. Within the same age? 
You know what I mean? Group or whatever. Yeah. So look, Seriously? that's a lot of fathers. That's How a lot of fathers. Oh, so it's old, older son. gentlemen. No, not no, no, twenties. Twenties. But we but talking. You know, but like we talk, the kids. These are still fathers. They're yeah, brothers. They're and brothers. Their sons. sons. Yeah. But y'all already started Project Break Home. Right. You already start for being from an urban community. Do you know anybody in your family that's been in prison or in prison now? You, you you know, know. It in your life. Did anybody did uh, anybody in your in, in your family was was yeah, um hurt um was violence. affected by gun violence or killed by gun violence or something that happened in the urban community? My family? Or somebody that you that's close Relative, to you? People close. I know, yes, I know a few oh. people right. that I shot killed. Um no. My, my I'm just gonna, no. No, I'm saying no. <laughs> the first question I asked. Which which was was what? <laughs> Saying a lot of stuff. I'm trying to take it in. I'm learning too. I'm trying to take it in, and then you ask a question. And I'm, I'm about, which question? Uh, have, did I know somebody who was killed or, or somebody in jail? Violence? Somebody that you're related to was ever in jail? Yeah, of course I do. <laughs> or somebody in your family is in jail currently? No. But you know somebody else in jail? Yes. All right. What about you? Yeah, I know. I got people that's in jail now. In All right. Place. What about you? I know one person that is in jail for guilty by association. Oh. All right. That's even worse. And that's twelve. He's doing twelve right now. Woo! Whoa! And that's and that's and this is and this is a that's big a, problem because we only it's only like fourteen it's only thirteen percent of us in America period. But the percentage of us black people that's in the urban neighborhoods are more than likely to be in jail. Mm-hmm. Right? We're, we're filled up. First of all, we're supposed to be the land of the free, and in America, five percent. I mean, all of us in jail makes up five percent of the world's population. Five mm. percent. Mm. Obama said that too. That makes that makes no sense. How is how is this the land of free? And we got all this opportunity, right? right? And we have alleged all this opportunity. Remember, I'm talking about this opportunity. Let me go back to it. Right. But as of right now, we're gonna talk about this alleged opportunity, and we can make up a big percent. We can have our own country. Now, how many people know about Australia? You know about Australia? What about it? You know, Uggs. That's where yeah. Uggs is from. Yeah. Australia, right? Melbourne. Yeah, mm-hmm. Australia. You Kangaroo know, Jack. Right. Kangaroo Jack. We want to give we want to shout out to Australia Sydney, for giving us Sydney. Hugh for giving us Hugh Jackman. Right. Who else? Yes. Uh, 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 Thor. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 both of the Hemsway. Both of yeah. the Hemsworth. All right. Yeah. 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 You know, Uggs. You know, a lot of young ladies wear Uggs. <laughs> Uggs is from Australia. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But let me tell you a little bit. Some little fact about Australia. <laughs> Australia. It was. It was. It was. It was <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um. You know, England wanted to colonize Australia. Mm-hmm. It was a land with a whole bunch of stuff, and you had different tribes of people there already, mm-hmm. but it, it was still more land than people. So they wanted to come and, you know, use some of the resources. You know, they were conquering. Do you know who they put there? Anybody like that? Convicts. Prisoners. Prisoners. Right. To? Australia. To? They to sent... Live or to? To live. Mm. They sent their prisoners from England... Mm-hmm. To... The land of Australia. The land of Australia to live freely, oh. to colonize it, and then they send prostitutes over there with them. Was the prostitutes so like, from Amsterdam? Like, 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 I don't know, but they, they just—it was from okay. England. So it has that type of. So listen now, mind you, we have a we have a country right that's based off of crooks, criminals, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, from prisons, right? Mm-hmm. Why is their crime rate lower than ours? Why is, why are there their 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 uh, number of of prisoners is so lower than ours. Is that making any sense to y'all? No. But unless unless maybe they're killing each other. I don't know. Maybe they learned their lesson. They got a second chance. Oh, they learned their yeah. lesson. Yeah. I don't want to feel like I spoiled out, but like a lot of things y'all saying, I'm kind of like. I have, I mean, it's all like, when you take somebody out of that environment. Exactly. Mm-hmm. They have a like, better respect. A lot of life. people, even if you took. Black people and minorities out of this environment, and you put exactly. them somewhere else. Exactly. I can probably guarantee you that they would act different. They would exactly. do. Oh, so so That's you said if, if, if wait, so if they take them out of where environment, right? Yeah. Out of the projects, out of the urban Envi- areas. All right, environment. Right. That's the main each thing. Other. Environment. Now, what makes what makes our environment?
things up. It's man. already it's already a system set in place. Oh, now, now, he get, now you're getting it. I was now waiting for that. You know what I'm saying? And it's a system that we mm-hmm. probably can never Get overthrow. You know what I'm okay. saying? We can never really turn it over because it's not for us. You know what I'm saying? What's the first thing so, you do when you hit the lottery? You move out, you move. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's so just me. It's basically, you move. Yeah, it's basically a system that's set in place and it's a hierarchy that's set in place that we don't have anything to do with. No, sure. And we basically need to move or start to create something of our own or something like that if we ever want to find redemption in this issue. But us fighting a system that is not made for us yes, I think win. it's gonna be a so we have so happen. now so now we have we have we have it there you know we're gonna go into a quick commercial break but we have it there <laughs> the laws really you know it gel and stuff like that it, once you put a whole bunch of people that wasn't from there look at the numbers look how the number changed so I think that based off of that in these areas we should be we should get more leniency when it comes to that one with the law. to say did y'all say take people from where they are and put them somewhere else? Isn't that what happened? Isn't that how we got here? Wasn't we in Africa chilling? Yeah, that's, oh, that's but wait, but wait. We was clean and clean. No, 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 you know what I'm saying? A lot of, don't 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 I don't, don't think that a lot of a lot of white people went over there and just just do a lasso over somebody and say you stuck yes, here. But it. not even even that. Even when the Portuguese were going to um um Angola mm-hmm. and you know they hit the queen up and because they wanted to go to you know which is Brazil now. Mm-hmm. You know she gave them a lot of her prisoners. You told me this story. She gave them a lot of the prisoners because they gold mine. I mean they diamond mine over there and stuff like that. She said here they have life or they about to be executed anyway. You know it was tribal wars over there, right? and most of us that's over here were the ones tribes that lost. I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. A lot of people like to hear that, but it is what it is. You know, and and this is and this is why I like to I like to bring up all the time because a lot of people think that it's it's about skin color. It's not. It's mm-hmm. about it's about good and bad. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. you know what? I, and I'm not gonna fault people because wrong is something you do. It's not something you become. You get what I'm saying? So I'm not gonna sit here and say that white has a wrong genetic gene in it. Mm-mm. But. But, 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 but through but, history, we can obviously that there's something wrong there. Something wrong We're with following what? the same Wizard of Oz story since the shit was created. What story? The Wizard of Oz story. You know, you get to the end of the road and happiness is there and stuff mm. like that. Like, we're following that same... That's the vision that we're Cinderella being presented. Story, right? That's, that's why I mentioned the Matrix. Like, I just want to answer your question before we go to mm. break. Um, you was like, why, um, why take somebody out of the environment and stuff like that? It's because of what we're surrounded by. The yeah. things that that been shown to us is what we pass down a generation. This mm-hmm. is the people that didn't have the determination to go through other borders and move to some other places. Like we're continuing that same story. Mm-hmm. I agree with that actually. All right, but we we not <laughs> going to commercial. We'll be right back with face the facts. Listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network, listen to the voices in your head. The views and opinions expressed on GoPro Radio Network shows are solely those of the speakers and are not necessarily the views or opinions of GoPro Radio Network Inc. or its affiliates. These broadcasts are provided on the understanding that they do not constitute professional advice or services. Individuals who speak on these broadcasts express their own opinions, experiences, and conclusions. GoPro Radio Networks and its affiliates do not necessarily endorse or oppose any particular opinion or conclusion discussed in these broadcasts. You may not edit or modify or redistribute these broadcasts in any way without the express permission from GoPro Radio, LLC. GoPro Radio assumes no liability for any of your activities in connection with our broadcast or for your use of these broadcasts in connection with your website, computer, smartphone, tablet, iPad, or future listening devices. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. Why are you paying for radio? Are you serious? GoPro Radio offers content for free. Go to www.goproradio.com and listen to original, irreverent, and exceptional talk shows. It's free! 
Go to www.goproradio.com now. It's that simple and free. www.goproradio.com. Listen to the voices in your head. Oh. We are an amazing people. Rooted in Africa, the cradle of human civilization. Descendant of the awesome men and women who made a way out of no way. People steeped in the values of truth, justice, respect, harmony, balance, reciprocity, and order. But 400 years of enslavement, Jim Crow, and racism, fueled by the lie of black inferiority, have taken their toll. The result? Too much pain. Too much hurt. Too much loss. We owe our ancestors, ourselves, and our children so much more than this. Join the movement for emotional emancipation, healing, and wellness for black people. Go to communityhealingnet.org and take the pledge to defy the lie and embrace the truth. That's communityhealingnet.org. Our children and our ancestors are waiting. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a great opportunity. If you have an event, product, service, talent, or something important to say, now is your chance. You can have your very own radio show. Whether you're just starting out or a veteran looking for a professional platform to enhance your presentation and following, the GoPro Radio Network is the premier place to cultivate and share new and exciting content. We can help you grow your audience and keep it growing long after your first broadcast. Now you have a voice. Call 212 696 8562 or visit www.goproradio.com and you'll be amazed at how easy and affordable it is to have your very own professional radio show on the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. You're listening to content developed by The GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network, listen to the voices in your head. Yeah, we're okay, back. We're, we're, we're back, back and we live. We're about to wrap it up real quick. Uh, before then, we want to just get a quick little one-two punch of everybody's final thought, everybody's final word. Start across, start over here. Keep it brief. Thank yes. you. <laughs> oh, my name is Rudy D. Jesus. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, um, Rude Boy Sick, Intellect Clothing, hashtag um, Interlopics um, from Brooklyn. Shout out to New York. Thank you guys for having me on the show. My name is uh, Kamau Kenyatta, K-A-M-A-U-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-E. It's very hard to spell, but once you get it, you got it. <laughs> I'm on everything, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, um, Twitter, everything. You can find me across the board. D? D, GGD Clothing CEO, hashtag GGD. Go get that G-O-G-I-T-D-A-H-T. Spelled a little different. D A H T. D A H T. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you know, my random final thought. thought is always a random thought. Of course. <laughs> the wise will admire you. The wishful will envy, envy you. The weak will hate you. This is just the realities for those who dare to be epic or have the audacity to be different. Keep in mind, your vibe attracts your tribe. That's my random thought. <laughs> I like that. I like that too. That was good. Well, I'm going to face the fact today. We do know, it's clear for me to say that it's a fact that a lot of us are targeting our communities mm-hmm. and our urban communities. Things are not fair. Uh, we don't have the same opportunities everybody has. But however, just because somebody puts you in a room alone with a gun, you don't have to shoot yourself with it. That's right. We need to all come at peace with that, understand that all right, we're not we're not given the same privilege that everybody else is, but that doesn't mean that we can't overcome and we can't progress and we can't move on. And like you said something about the um yellow brick road, how we all focused on that whiz, uh the Wizard of Oz mentality. And sometimes you get to the end of the brick road and there's nothing there. You got a fake wizard. But I want I want to express to you that this success is not a destination, it's a it's journey. journey. Yes, it so it's like live your life. The ascending part. When you when you're flying in a plane or anything or any roller coaster, 
the best part isn't the end of the roller coaster when you're getting off for most of us. I it guess. is. But <laughs> the fun part is that you're going, is that you're moving, that you're progressing, yeah, that you're good. you're living and not just existing. Exactly. All right, because when it all boils down, the only salvation that we really have is death. That's yes, the only sir. time you really have peace. Yes, and you're yeah. So you have to deal with the fight and the opposition every day of your life. It's just how you're going to deal with it and how you're going to take it and what you're going to learn from it and you're going to give to your kids mm -hmm. so they can keep on giving it to their kids. It has to be the gift that has to keep on giving. And that's me facing the facts today. It was a wonderful show with this panel, this, uh, this fine young gentleman. I'd like to give you a hand yeah, real quick. Very, man. very good. <laughs> we'll see you next week with Face the Facts. Take us out, yeah?